Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Boros TV tutorial and in part one of our two-part tutorial on creating a very cool Michael Bay HBO boxing glow effect, we looked at creating the effect itself and I teased about showing you some integrated tools that you'll want to keep in mind when working with Film Glow. I also mentioned that these integrated tools were not unique to Film Glow, but can be found in effects throughout Boros Continuum Complete 8. And you can see from the animation in front of you that I've animated my finished Film Glow to the sound of a heartbeat. And I know you're probably thinking, yeah, yeah, that's easy, he did it with Beat Reactor. And yes, you would be correct. I did animate it with Beat Reactor, but not as its own effect. I animated it from the integrated Beat Reactor right from within Film Glow. Let me show you why this is easier to do than it ever has been before. Okay, so let's quit out a quick time and let's command tab into Adobe's After Effects. Now, before we get started and I show you how the integrated Beat Reactor works inside of Film Glow, I want to show you some other features that you may have overlooked that's included with Film Glow, but is actually not unique to Film Glow, and you're going to find it across many of the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right down to the composition. Now, this is the same composition that we ended the last tutorial with, so everything is exactly the same as we left it. I'm going to hit F3 on my keyboard to call up the effects control window. And the first thing that I want to point out to you is the overlay controls for the effect. You're going to notice that if I select the effect, you'll see these overlay controls on the screen that are going to affect basic parameters inside of the effect. You'll see as I navigate over top of them, you'll see that this on-screen widget controls the glow radius. This one controls the glow intensity. This one here controls the glow threshold. And finally, this controls the crosstalk. So if these are parameters that you use on a regular basis, you don't need to get in and manually adjust them in the effects control window. You can actually do a lot of your work right here from the on-screen controls. But if you don't like seeing those while you're working, you can also simply turn them off so you don't need to see them, or again, turn them on whenever you want to use them. Now, one of my favorite features inside of pretty much all of the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8, and this was something that was new inside of Boris Continuum Complete 7, is the compare mode. And you'll see compare mode is actually hidden away right up here at the top. And if you're not looking closely, you might miss it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl down compare mode. You'll see right now it's turned off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. And you'll see we have a few different types of comparing that we can do. The one that I like to use all the time is simply compare. You'll see that as soon as I turn compare on, a red bar has now appeared down the middle of my screen. And along with that bar that has appeared, you'll see over here on the left hand side, we now have access to the wipe parameter, which I can now manually drag over to get a before and after look as to exactly what is going on with the effect. Now you'll see that I dragged it over here inside the effects control window, but of course, I can also grab it and adjust it right here from within the on-screen controls. Now what's important to keep in mind about compare mode is that once compare mode is turned on, you'll see that if I step out of the effect, it's still there. You're going to need to remember this because if you don't remember to come up and actually turn compare mode off, you'll be rendering out half your effect. So keep that in mind when you're working. Turn compare mode on when you're going to want to use it and then turn it off when you're done with it. Now I also want to point out that inside of Film Glow, we do have access to a couple of other built-in effects such as the motion tracker. You'll see that we have integrated motion tracking available right from within the Film Glow effect. Like I said, this is not unique to Film Glow. If you take a look in a lot of effects across Boris Continuum Complete 8, you're going to find compare mode, you're going to find motion tracker, and you're also going to find pixel chooser located again right down here below motion tracker. So you can see a lot of built-in tools that are going to make your life a lot easier and save you from having to double and triple up on effects to do something that you think should all be able to be done within the one effect. Okay, but what we want to actually find is Beat Reactor. And Beat Reactor is located right down here at the bottom, right below Pixel Chooser. Now, obviously, to work with Beat Reactor, I'm going to need a beat to work with. So I'm just going to hide out of After Effects for a second, and you're going to see on my desktop, I have a heartbeat.aiff sound effect. And you'll see that if I hit the space bar, I'm using Lion here, but obviously, if you're using Snow Leopard, this will work the same. I'm just going to hit the space bar, and I can preview this heart beating sound effect. Now, this is what we're going to want to animate our glow to inside of After Effects. So let me show you how it works with the integrated beat reactor. We're going to command tab back into After Effects or obviously alt tab for all my Windows friends out there. 
And the first thing we obviously need to do is to enable Beat Reactor. Once I have Beat Reactor enabled, you're going to see now that Beat Reactor has come alive down at the bottom of Film Glow. I'm just going to troll down Beat Reactor and you're going to see that Beat Reactor is actually a little bit different when it is integrated in the effect as opposed to how it works when you're just applying it as a separate effect. You're going to see the very first thing that After Effects is going to want to know is what is the host sound layer? What that actually means is that we're going to need to import that into After Effects. So let's just do that. Command and I on the Mac, Control and I on Windows. I'm going to select my heartbeat sound effect. I'm going to say open and I'm going to drag it and drop it into my composition. Now when I go back into the effects control window and I scroll all the way back down to the bottom to beat reactor and it asks me what is the host sound layer, what I'm going to do is tell it that it is the heartbeat sound. As soon as I do, you're going to see everything else come alive down here at the bottom. All of my parameters have now become active. Now how the integrated beat reactor works is, like I said before, a little bit different as to how the standard beat reactor works. In this case, you'll see that if I apply parameter A2, you'll see it says unused. If I click on the drop down, you'll see that I actually only have three options. The three most common parameters that you would be applying Beat Reactor to, you actually have access to right here. And what I'm going to be using is simply Glow Threshold. Now what I'm going to do is once I select Glow Threshold, you're going to see now that my selection range has become active. But the only problem is that I don't see the, the Beat Reactor graph. What is going on here? Well, obviously, because I'm sitting at the very first frame, what I want to do is just start advancing frame by frame. And you'll see on the very first frame, suddenly that waveform comes alive with the sound of that heartbeat. And we'll just go to the next frame here. You'll see that's not too bad. I think that was probably on the first frame, probably the best reference that I'm going to have for setting the heartbeat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two columns right here, this one and this one. So let's just take our sampler. I'm just going to bring it right up here and I'm going to take my other sampler. We're just going to bring it right over here like such. And believe it or not, most people might think that we were done because you're going to see that what happens is, is that if I come back up and I say, don't show me the graph anymore, and I'm just going to come up and I'm going to turn off my on-screen controls here. There we go. And I'm just going to preview this quickly here. You're going to see that there is our effect looking very nice already. And in most cases, people might think that we might not even really need to do anything else to this effect because it's going to look pretty good, except there is one little bit of an issue that's going on. And what I'm going to do is just simply hit the space bar here to preview this. And you're going to see that the effect is actually reversed. What is happening is you'll see that when the heart beats, when it stops, the glow stays on the screen. But we'd actually rather have it the other way. When the heart's beating, when it goes bump, bump, that's when we want the glow to appear. So how do we adjust this? Well, it's actually very easy. I'm just going to stop this for one second. I'm going to come back into my film glow effect all the way down to the bottom to beat reactor. What we're going to do is we're going to drop down our audio apply options A. And all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to reverse the output minimum and the output maximum so that the minimum is 100 and the maximum is zero. And then when I preview this again, It's looking pretty close to what I want it to be. Now, the only issue that I have going on is that the glow is now very staccato. It kind of cuts on and cuts off. Whereas the heartbeat, I want it to be the beat hits and then it sort of fades out. And most people might think, oh, well, I don't know how we would get in and do that. But believe it or not, again, this is something that's very easy to adjust right from within Beat Reactor. And the parameter that we're going to be adjusting is simply fall off. You'll see that the fall off right now is set to be none. And you'll see in brackets, it says immediate, meaning that the effect hits and disappears instantly, which is why the glow is cutting on and cutting off. What we actually want to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to set the fall off to be linear and I'm going to set the fall off time to be one, which basically means one second. Now what we're going to do is we're going to preview this again. And it's only going to take a second here for it to preview. And once it's done, it starts to play back. There we go. You're going to see now that we have a very cool, very organic film glow that beats to the beat of that heartbeat and really creates a very smooth, very organic look that you would see in something like the opening of HBO Boxing. So you can see that using the integrated beat reactor with an effect like Film Glow is a great way to get in and add an extra layer of realism to the work that you're working on and to create a very, very cool end look that in most cases your clients might have to go to those high-end compositing suites to create. Well, now you can tell them, you know what, don't worry. I've got the power of Boris Continuum Complete 8 and Film Glow with integrated beat reactor and I can do that effect for you right here in my own edit suite. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borseffects.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.